Good day, everybody, and welcome to a little lesson on RNG. Most RuneScapers and gamers in general that I talk to are very familiar with this term, but if you're not, RNG stands for Random Number Generator. It's a concept used broadly in computer programming, and it's especially relevant to gamers because this is the thing that determines your luck. For example, in the loot that you get when you kill something, like a boss, or when you open a rewards chest. At a high level, when you think of luck in terms of getting loot, it's pretty simple to understand. When you get loot from something in a game like RuneScape or any RPG, an easy way to picture what happens is to think of a dice with many, many sides rolling. Or a die, I guess it's called if it's just one dice. Anyway, when you kill a boss, for example, you can imagine that everything on the boss's drop table is represented on its own side of this die. The die rolls, and whatever side it lands on is the drop you get. Now, some drops are more rare than others. Let's say, as an example, that a boss's drop table includes a 1 in 500 shot at a scripture of when, and a 1 in 50 shot at a water battle staff. That is the actual drop rate for the scripture of when from the Arch Glacor, by the way, in normal mode, uh, with all the mechanics enabled, uh, but I'm making up the drop rate for the water battle staff just for the sake of this example. Since the chance of a water battle staff in this case is 10 times greater than that of a scripture of when, you can imagine that if the Arch Glacor's die had 500 sides, uh, one side would be for the scripture of when, and 10 sides would be for the water battle staff. So when the die rolls, it's 10 times as likely to land on a water battle staff versus a scripture of when. So that's the easy peasy concept of programming luck into games. Simple enough, right? But RNG in computer programming is actually not as straightforward as a dice roll or something like a coin flip in real life. This is because for the most part, random number generators are not truly random and actually follow some formulas or like patterns. This is just a limitation of how computers and software can process a task like this. It's easy for players that have been around a while to recognize that the drop rates for rare loot do not really translate to dice rolls in real life. Not really. Uh, for example, the chance of getting a unique drop from Karapak in normal mode is 1 in 768. There are three drops in this category, the Scripture of Jazz, Carapax Wrist Straps, and the Greater Concentrated Blast Codex. Each solo kill gets you three drop piles, so the chance for a specific one of these drops gets bumped to 1 in 256. Um, that's just 768 times 3. Further, the chance for getting any one of these three drops in no particular order is 1 in 85. Uh, that's because there are three rare drops that uh, have a chance of 1 in 256 each, so 1 in 85. Um, really what it means is that every 85 kills at normal mode care pack, you should be getting one of these three rare drops in no particular order. I myself, on this iron account, have killed 122 care pack or so in normal mode, which is just one note on Dragonkin's Slayer task worth. Um, I have received two scriptures of jazz, and just at the very end of my task, I was very lucky and got the greater concentrated blast codex I was actually looking for. Uh, this is roughly one rare drop in every 40 kills, so I got very lucky there, and very above the expected drop rate. There's another iron player I know from a clan chat who has over 1,000 care pack kills and no greater concentrated blast. This is roughly four times over the expected rate of one codex every 256 kills, and extremely unlucky for that specific item. I don't know if this is normal mode or hard mode kills, by the way, but I assume normal, and either way, it's very unlucky. The rates of players completing the Fractured Staff of Armadillo are even more baffling. Each of the three pieces need a drop in order, which helps a lot for an iron especially, and each piece has a 1 in 450 chance per loot pile to drop. So since there are three drop piles, there's a 1 in 150 chance per solo hard mode kill of getting a Fractured Staff piece. One player in the same Iron Man guest clan chat I hang out in has completed the Fractured Staff in only 122 hard mode care pack kills, which is incredibly fortunate. That's well below the drop, the expected drop rate for even one staff piece. Another player in the same chat has over 1,000 hard mode care pack kills and has only one Fractured Staff piece. Even if this player is doing trio kills, that would mean a drop rate of 1 in 450 per kill, when, which Statistically speaking, they should have gotten two pieces by 900 kills, if that's the case. And they should be about 250 kills away from their third, right? Uh, because it would take about, uh, if I'm doing my math right, a little over 1,200. Uh, sorry, my mental math is slow. I'll post the number here. Anyways, 
Something just feels weird about this. Like, this wouldn't happen if you were rolling a dice or flipping a coin. There's, there is one common fallacy that occurs to a lot of players, which is the feeling that they're owed a drop after a certain number of kills. Like, if you've killed 499 Arch Black Wars with all the mechanics on in normal mode, the next one has to be a scripture of when, right? The next drop. No, not at all, because individual drops, just like individual coin flips and dice rolls, are completely independent and unrelated to each other. When you flip a coin a thousand times in real life, you expect to see something around 500 heads and 500 tails, right? Or maybe like 510 heads and 490 tails, but something pretty close to even. Well, technically, technically, it is equally as probable that you will flip only one heads and 999 tails out of a thousand coin flips. Equally probable as it is that you would flip 500 heads and 500 tails. The idea with probability like this is that in the long run, things will even out and match statistically in the long run. In other words, if you flip a million coins, or if you flip a coin a million times, it's much more likely that you'll see a 50-50 distribution between your heads and tails, compared to flipping a coin, say, 10 times and expecting to see a 50-50 distribution. You can kind of picture it, right? You flip a coin 10 times, you wouldn't be completely surprised if you got like 7 heads and 3 tails. Or if you got 8 heads and 2 tails, you'd be... Like, your luck would be a little bit weird, but you wouldn't think anything of it. If you flip 100 coins, you do expect to see something closer to like 50-50, but it could be 60-40, it could even be 65-35, whatever. The point being, as time goes on, it's more likely that things will even out in the long run, and you'll see the even distribution. But, even with that said, in... Even though it is mathematically equally likely to flip one heads and 999 tails out of a thousand coin flips, you would be totally blown away if that actually happened, right? Um, like, it shouldn't happen. <laughs> so why does it feel like we see this type of thing happen fairly often with drops in a game like RuneScape? Like, fairly often. To, really quickly, to answer the clickbait question in the video title, um, no, I don't think you can rig RuneScape RNG or the RNG in most modern games, sorry. Um, especially with a game like RuneScape, the complexity of events happening all the time that affect RNG calculations is too great to predict, as far as I know at least. But predicting and rigging RNG has been possible in other games before. Golden Sun is a series that was first released for the Game Boy Advance, with one sequel for the Nintendo DS as well. This was in the early 2000s, and I think the DS one was released in 2005. I grew up playing and replaying the two Game Boy Advance games. They're some of my favorite turn-based RPGs of all time, and I still jump back into them, actually, for nostalgia's sake every now and then. Anyway, um, Golden Sun was the first game I ever heard of players being able to successfully rig the RNG to get really rare drops, which is why I bring this game up. Um, the games have some extremely w rare weapon and armor drops from common monsters in random encounters, and most players never saw or even knew about them because they were that rare of drops. But if you were a modern gamer back then, or contemporary I should say, and you went to go check GameFAQs or CheatCC.com, you'd find guides explaining how to get these drops with a 100% success rate. How is that possible? The idea is this. You go to a specific part of the world or a specific room in a dungeon, save the game, and turn it off. You turn the game back on and follow a specific set of instructions. For example, as soon as you load the game back up, walk into the north room, and your next random encounter will be one harpy and one troll. 100% of the time, if you turn your game off and on and walk into that room, 100% of the time your next encounter will be that. Then, you have each member of your team use a specific attack or ability. For example, Isaac attacks, Garrett uses Nova, and Ivan defends. When the round is over and the enemies are defeated, boom, 100% guaranteed drop rate for the Harpies drop table. So how does that work? Um, well, basically, someone figured out one sequence of events that affects the RNG algorithm in such a way that it points it towards producing the rare item drop. By saving and exiting the game and starting it up again, you essentially make a clean slate for the RNG calculations. And from there, if you know the pattern or formula of the calculations, you can move it in your favor. Interesting example, right? Now, does this mean that in theory you could be guaranteed scripture of when drops if you log in, enter the fight instance, have a specific ability rotation at the Arch Black Ore, wear specific gear, drink exactly the right potions, and do a goblin salute before you deliver the killing blow? 
Honestly, I think it actually could be possible in theory to do something like that, but does that mean that anyone can reproduce exactly what sequence of events you'd need to rig RNG in this way? I honestly don't think so. <laughs> Let's say you're flipping a coin a thousand times in real life, and what you want specifically is to get one heads and 999 tails. Like, this is what you're going for. Rigging your real life RNG would be like figuring out the quote unquote random circumstances that affect your coin flips. Maybe you figured out that when you flip the coin with a certain force, at a certain angle, from a certain height, catch it a certain way after an exact time has passed at the exact position in space every time, and you make sure that the wind is blowing exactly the same way every single time, you can accurately predict actually which face of the coin you'll get if you know how to control all the conditions. Doesn't sound easy, does it? And if I had to guess, I'd say it's even more complicated to rig RNG in RuneScape. A game like RuneScape or any MMO is incomprehensibly more complex as far as the events happening than a single-player Game Boy Advance RPG with limited mechanics. Even in the third Golden Sun game released for Nintendo DS in 2005, the RNG abuse was fixed thanks to better methods computationally um, that make RNG calculations less predictable. <laughs> Furthermore, in the case of RuneScape, in case you didn't know, RuneScape operates on a tick system. Many of you already know this, but a tick is exactly 0.6 seconds, and everything that happens in the game happens as each tick passes. And there are so many events firing off in the background of RuneScape. Every tick. Especially during a boss fight, you have countless buffs and debuffs triggering calculations and readjustments of your stats, abilities fire off in your revolution, but you probably will use specific ones as needed here and there as well. Even what you were doing before the boss fight has an impact on the RNG calculations, for all you know. Have you been logged in for an hour before the boss fight, or did you just log in and jump into the boss instance? Does it even matter? To be honest, I have no idea how RuneScape's RNG calculations actually work. But what I feel for sure is that there are certain things that affect it in ways that luck in real life is not affected. Let me give you an example that really weirds me out. On my Iron account, I was training archaeology at the Praetorian Excavation Site, the level 107 spot, in hopes of Inquisitor staff pieces. Because it's an iron and I can't go buy porters, I go pickpocket Amlod elves for porters. So basically, I go back and forth between archaeology training and pickpocketing for porters. Now, I've recently acquired all of the seven Saren symbols uh, pieces from pickpocketing elves. Uh, actually, I think there's eight of them, sorry. Anyways, these are extremely rare pickpocketing drops you get from each of the eight elf clans in Prif. I'm not going to say the whole thing, in Prif. And once you have all eight, you can put them together in a cool necklace, and it's a trimmed completionist cape achievement to do so. I managed to get all eight symbols before I hit level 102 thieving. There are players I've read about who go nearly until level 109 or 110 thieving before they complete theirs, but that's an RNG story for another time. Here's why I mentioned this. As extraordinarily rare as these symbol pieces are, I am up to 35 Amlod symbol pieces in my bank. So at the time of this recording now, that's where I'm at. Um, and I haven't been doing this training method for very long. Right now my thieving level is 106, which is high, but not that high for that many symbol pieces. From what I've been keeping track, basically I'm getting a symbol piece every like two or three times that I go pickpocketing for porters. The This rate of getting this symbol piece is absurdly lucky, and I did not see this kind of luck in my grind to 99 thieving or to completing the Saren symbol. Furthermore, I am now up to like 7 Prif musicians tops, and like 16 legs and a bunch of boots and gloves. I've also read about players hitting like 110 thieving or 109 thieving before they get the musicians top, because that's required for Master Clue Scrolls and it's untradeable. Um, so... It seems ridiculous to me. And because it seems so ridiculous to me, I have to wonder, and it's kind of irrational, but I have to wonder, to be honest, if this type of thing is like stealing my RNG for other things in RuneScape, like maybe Inquisitor staff pieces or boss drops. <laughs> um, I do have a, a very regular pattern when I get these symbol drops. Um, I do archeology span for 20 to 30 minutes, and then I pickpocket Amlod, and then I repeat. So there's like a very apparent cycle there, usually. Is there something in here that I'm doing that is, quote, guaranteeing or guiding the RNG calculations towards Amlod symbol pieces? 
this is where my mind goes. I really cannot confirm or deny that the actions I take on my account are enough to rig RNG so hard, but it's an interesting anecdote, at least. Also, um, I guess kind of relevant to the subject of this video, um, I did recently complete an Inquisitor staff on this iron account, um, and I ended up getting both pieces at the level 107 archaeology spot, which is the most absurdly poor drop rate of all the spots that you can excavate that at. Uh, and I did this by 113 or 114 archaeology. Um, actually 113, I think, because I had to grind two more archaeology levels to 115 and then use archaeology potions to get 118 and finish the uh, last Zoroshian set for the last Inquisitor piece. Anyways, um, yeah, there are a lot of iron players or players in general who hit 200 million archaeology experience before they finish any Inquisitor staff, so... I guess Amlod wasn't stealing all my RNG either, and I guess I am absurdly lucky in that way, so I just really don't know what to say on that anymore. Uh, further fun fact though, the first piece that I got very early on uh, was as I was AFKing archaeology and driving up to the pyramids of Teotihuacan, which is a bit north of Mexico City. My wife and some friends and I were driving up there. Uh, Teotihuacan is one of the most significant archaeological sites in the entire world. So, um, you know, if there's anybody around Giza or Chichen Itza or maybe somewhere in Turkey, I don't know, uh, in Athens by the Acropolis, if anyone cares to take a couple of laps around there and do some archaeology, let me know if you find staff pieces or spear tips. Um, let's see if Jajek snuck in. Jagex? I've been told I've been saying that wrong. Anyways, let's see if they snuck in some geolocation-based RNG. I don't think so, but it's a fun thought. Anywho, um, those are pretty, basically all my thoughts on RNG, uh, particularly in RuneScape. If I had to suggest anything to take away from this, it would be only to maybe pay attention to the patterns you have when you play. Are there some areas that you have great RNG in? Do you get like Dragon Rider lances every time you do a Vindicta Reaper task, but you can't seem to get Cinderbane gloves after thousands of uh, Moss Golem kills on a task? Is there something you're doing differently in one case versus the other, leading up to these drops or lack thereof? In my case, for example, I'm obviously very lucky with symbol pieces and Inquisitor staff drops. Um, wow, I just got another Perif Musician's top as I'm recording this right now because I'm AFKing Thieving. <sighs> But I have yet to grind the spear tip, so we'll see how that goes. Um, it also took me like 3,000 Dark Beast kills to get one Dark Bow, which is statistically like three times over the drop rate. So these are areas that I notice. Like these are things that I think about. Where am I, is my RNG poor and where is it great? And is there anything I'm doing differently in either case? Um, is there anything I was doing beforehand leading up to this? Did I just, am I more lucky when I just log in and start doing stuff? Or am I more lucky when I've been doing something else for like an hour and then hop over to the archaeology spots? Things like that, I think of. Does it really matter? And can you affect the outcome of RNG much? I don't know. But now hopefully you at least know a little bit more than you knew before about how RNG actually works in computers. And maybe you won't be too shocked anymore when you see extreme luck, either good or bad, and just know that the wind is blowing in ways that you can't really see. That's all. Um, I hope this video helped. I really do. Please consider giving this a like if you enjoyed it and subscribing if you want to see more interesting content like this. I do post content like this pretty regularly and I'm trying quite hard to grow my audience, so I do appreciate all the support. Thank you if you made it all the way through and I'll catch you in the next one.